What do an E-Division football team and the church have in common? The answer is, you don't have to be very good to join. Many years ago, I joined a team in, our e group, in the E-Division of our local touch football comp, and yeah, we weren't very good. We lost almost every game. In fact, the only game the team won was the week that I wasn't there. So I was probably the weakest link holding them back, but it was fun. But the question of how good you have to be to join was one of the big questions of the early Christian church. The original OG disciples of Jesus were Jewish, just as Jesus himself was. And they understood that Jesus was the Messiah that they had been waiting for. And so after Jesus had risen from the dead, and after the Spirit had come and the new community of disciples had formed together, they didn't think of themselves as being a new religion. They simply thought of themselves as being Jews for whom the Messiah had come, and that their Judaism was perfected and fulfilled. But then as the years went on, in the, middle, in the middle decades of the first century, new people wanted to become followers of Jesus as well and join the church, people who were not Jewish already. And that led to the big question, well, can they just be baptised and receive communion and belong to the church? Or should they become Jewish first, being, which involved circumcision and other particular rituals? This was a big, big contentious question for the early years of the church. And so what, there was two different divisions, each believing one or the other thing. What we hear today in the Acts of the Apostles is kind of the condensed version of what's called the, the Council of Jerusalem, the first church council where the early leaders of the church came together to pray and to discern and to work this question out together. What we hear in the first reading today is really the summary of the response in which they decide that no, new, the new converts to Christianity do not have to become Jewish first. They don't have to be circumcised. They don't have to keep all the food laws. And they simply say, but just please abstain from these these few things, the meat of strangled animals, from meat sacrificed to idols, from fornication, to a few of the really big things which would be so abhorrent for the Jewish Christians. But no, no other barrier should be put there. there was a, this, the answer was, let's keep the barriers entry low. Let's welcome everyone who wants to be a follower of Jesus. And that's really, I guess, a philosophy which, um, you know, the, the question of, how, of what barriers entry or what expectation there might be to join the church has fluctuated over time and throughout history. I remember in my first few years as a young priest, one day kind of talking to our bishop and saying, look, you know, I just feel like we're, we're baptizing all these babies of people who don't go to church and don't demonstrate really any faith that I can see. Shouldn't we kind of, you know, say, look, no, you have to, you have to prove yourself. You have to demonstrate your faith before we'll baptize your child. And very gently, he just says, Jim, don't put obstacles in front of people. Don't, don't be a barrier. Just open the door that some people may then choose to walk through. And even though I found it hard at the time, as I look back, I think that was absolutely the right answer. It's not for us to, to place demands on people. We need to do everything we can to invite people to come receive the sacramental grace of baptism, indeed the sacramental grace of the Eucharist. And then... We hope and pray that the, the fact people are in that relationship of receiving grace through sacraments and belonging to the church will then empower them to want to step up and be better. Indeed, when I joined that little football team all those years ago, it made me want to be a better touch football player. So I trained, I went running, I jogged, I did everything I could to try to improve my school level, even though I wasn't that good. And that's really, I think, a good philosophy for us as a church too, to say there should be no barriers to entry. Everyone is welcome to join. Everyone's welcome to come into the church. But once you're in the church, then you should want to step up and, and do all you can to make the most of that membership, not just to get the t-shirt of joining the team and then do nothing about it. And so here in our church, we have in our parish, we have articulated what belonging looks like in terms of five expectations, five expectations for discipleship. And some of you will recognize these as the five pillars around which our pastoral plan is built. But I realize not everyone's familiar with those. So these five are connection, connection, worship, growth, giving, and service. So let me just briefly talk about each of those now. So connection is to have real relationships with other people in the church. So do you know five people? Have you had a, a significant conversation about something real with someone? Have you had a meal with somebody you're not related to in the church? These are building blocks of connection, building blocks of community. To worship is both our communal worship in the Eucharist on Sunday, but also our individual personal prayer, hopefully every day. And that interplay of personal prayer or family prayer each day and communal gathering on Sunday both mutually reinforce each other. 
Growth means to, to pursue your growth in faith and your spirituality. And so in our parish, we actually want to invite people to, to do at least one thing each year. We put on programs like Alpha, Lesson Programs, Unlocking the Mysteries of the Bible, the Wild Goose Program, and many others. The, the Men Alive, uh, sorry, the Men of St. Joseph, our youth ministry groups. We have uh, many different pr programs which help people to grow in faith. We invite you to consider doing one each year as building blocks to grow your faith. To give, to be generous in, in financial giving is also another element of belonging to a church. And so we ask everyone who has the means to give to become a committed giver in, in accord with what your means are. Your generosity is a real stamp of your, your belonging, your willing to commit to the church. And lastly, service. That we ask everyone to serve as a volunteer in one ministry, one area of parish life. When everyone, when everyone volunteers and everyone serves in, in some way, nobody has to do too much because the, the, the needs are shared amongst everyone. And it's, but it's not just for the end result, it's also for our sense of commitment, our sense of belonging to the church, our sense of discipleship, that volunteering and serving is good. So that's really a summary of our philosophy as a church, that we want to have no barriers to entry. We want to be welcoming and engaging and inviting to everyone. But then when you step in the door and say, yes, I want to be here, I want to be a disciple of Jesus, then we ask you to set good high expectations that we might grow into in each of those five elements, those five pathways, to take a journey along each one. So we might have a sense that we are indeed belonging to the team of the church. We are belonging to the body of Christ and growing, just as those early Christians did. Once they joined the church, they grew enormously. We too can do the same.